So we've seen the particular issues with the default direct lights. Is there anything that we can do to make them better? Well, one of the things that you might be aware of is the anything glows light that you can add to an object. So we've got a vertex object here that I've set up to be a light source. Now, at the moment, it's just a default vertex object. What I'm going to do is use the insert menu to add an anything glows light. What we then need to do is to associate that with the vertex object. So we need to type in the name of the item here, and that needs to be an exact match so it can identify which object you're talking about. Now, at the moment, it's set up for the highest quality, which is the facet. You can do it from the bounding box, a vertex, or each facet. The slowest should be the best. I'll increase the fidelity to 100. And again, we've got fall off parameters here. I'll put in 250 to make sure it covers the final sphere. Range fall off to 100% and a distance squared fall off. So by rights, this should actually generate the kind of result that we're after. Control R to do a render. And again, you can see that it's not really falling off particularly. We've got some fall off on the last one, but these three are fairly evenly lit. We've also got hard shadow here. So we're not getting automatic soft shadows with the anything glows light. It's not really resolving any of the issues that we've got. And if we do a quick render here to look at the object itself, you can see that it's still dark. We're not getting a match between an object emitting light and actually looking as though it's emitting light. The two are completely independent, and that requires more setup. The final way of producing a light in Carrera, I think, produces the best and most consistent results. What I'm going to do is to remove the Anything Glows light, and we're going to turn the vertex object into a glowing object. So go into the Material Editor, select the Glow channel, and what I'm going to do is to use the value between 1 and 10,000% and actually put that up to 10,000%. So we've got a brightly glowing object in the scene. Now, if I do a quick render on that, we won't actually get anything because by default, there's no interaction between the lights in the scene. What we need to do is to use the indirect light setting. And at this stage, I'm gonna put the gamma correction on to 2.2. And when I render again, you'll see that it does some lighting calculations, but now we're getting a much more marked fall off between the nearest sphere which is very brightly lit and then grading down through the spheres and producing a much more natural and even fall off of light. Note there's no fall off settings to make, it automatically produces the right kind of fall off and the physically correct kind of fall off. Also if we go back to the assemble room and do a quick render, we can see that it's now visible in the scene the appearance of the object matches the illumination that it's giving out. I'm just going to load another scene to demonstrate another benefit as well. This is our sphere that's going to be a light. I've currently got it set up to anything glows. And again, if I do a quick render on that, you can see that the object is dark and it's producing hard-edged shadows, which is not what you'd expect from a light of this sort of size. Yes, you can use the soft shadow under effects, but again, it's independent of the actual size of the object, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. So I'm going to delete the Anything Glows and turn this into one of our glowing lights. So go into the Material Editor again, and I'm going to create a new master just to make sure that it's not affecting any other object in the scene. Set the value to 10,000%. I'm going to put Gamma Correction on and Indirect Light and render again. Now you can see we're starting to get some soft edge shadows, but actually the considerable artifacts within this scene, so the lighting quality isn't high enough. We're also getting the issue with tiling that I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to correct the tile size, putting it down to a minimum. And I'm going to change the lighting through to best. And then if I render again, we'll see that we're getting a much smoother appearance. For the soft shadows. You can also see the light reflecting on the side of the sphere here, which is a nice added effect, again adding to the realism. There's still a little bit of artifacting over here, but basically we're getting the correct fall off of the light, visible it should be in the scene. It will also be visible in reflections, and we're getting automatic soft shadowing according to the size and shape of the light that we've got. Notice if I take the gamma correction off, 
rather than the smoother fall off of the light that we get here, we'll get a much harsher image as the light falls off far too quickly. So you can see the light extends further out where it's completely white, but it actually falls off much quicker after that. And so it goes dark too quickly. Just abandon that at that stage because that demonstrated that particular point. With a glowing object, the size of the object will affect the illumination that you get from it. So the larger the object, the more illumination it will produce. If you've got a small bright object and you're not getting sufficient illumination from the 10,000 setting, you can use a multiplier. If we go in here and select operators multiply, we can select this to the value of 1 to 10,000. So 100 would give us the illumination that we had before. But if I set it to say 1,000, then we'll get 10 times the brightness of the 10,000 alone. Alternatively, if you want a coloured light, we can select colour here, and that will produce a coloured light. Something to watch for with the using glowing objects as a light is demonstrated in the next scene, where I've got a simple plane and this vertical plane, which is set to be a glowing object. Now, if I render that scene, you can see that we're getting light on each side of the central glowing plane but there are considerable differences between each side. On this side, we're getting a nice smooth illumination, but on this side, you're getting these terrible digital artifacts within the lighting area. It just doesn't look right at all. This is because in Carrera, the light is emitted properly only from one side of a plane and not from the other side. So if you're using planes to illuminate the scene, make sure they're positioned the right way and the surface normal is pointing towards your subject and not away. If you start getting digital artifacts like this, you can be pretty sure that your light is facing the wrong way. And for a final demonstration, I'm going to use a scene that's got two spotlights. And this is just two spotlights shining on a plane. At the moment, I've got gamma correction turned off. And if I render that, you can see that where the lights overlap, it's looking much too bright and you're getting these artifacts on the edges of the light. It doesn't look like a natural two spotlights overlapping would look in the real world. If I select gamma correction and render again, you can see that we're getting a much smoother addition of the two spotlights and it looks much more natural. It's for this reason that lighting has been relatively difficult within Carrera without the gamma correction. I think overall, you'll find using gamma correction means that you can use fewer lights and achieve much more predictable and better lighting within your scenes. That's not to say never use normal lights, but be careful how you set up and use them. Sometimes fall off is not important if the subject is relatively small, for example, compared with the distance of the light. Particularly for things like interior scenes, using glowing objects as lights can produce really good results where previously you would have struggled to get a realistic result.